When using Altium 365, you'll come to notice that it uses a folder structure to give us better organization for the items that are stored in our workspace. These folders are going to be listed on the left-hand side of the Explorer panel, as we can see here. Now, to get a better understanding of the folder structure, we'll take a look at the folders that currently exist along with their properties. For example, let's go ahead and take a look at the Components folder. This would have been a folder that was created strictly for components. If I expand the arrow on the left-hand side, you'll see that it's broken down into different component types. For example, we'd add capacitors inside of the capacitor folder, and then we would go ahead and add fuses in the fuse folder. This is a similar concept for our managed content and our templates as well. The benefit of the templates folder here is that you'll be able to see all of your templates within one centralized folder. Another important folder would be the projects folder, as this is going to list all of the projects that are currently stored in your Altium 365 workspace. Now, since these folders existed by default, we'll actually add some items to these folders, and then we'll take a look at creating our own to make it personal. Let's say I wanted to add a component type to the components folder. I can do so by simply right-clicking on the folder itself and adding a subfolder. In this case, I'm going to be selecting the components folder as we're going to be creating a new component type. Of course, it would be beneficial to give it a unique name so you can know which type of components are going to be stored here. In addition to this, the folder type is going to stay as components, even though we have a range of options here. Now, strictly for components, a component template can be selected so that it uses parameters that are coming from a component template. In this scenario, we're just creating a generic passive components folder, so I'm not going to use any template. We can see that the subfolder has been added under the components folder. This way here, we can have all of our component types within one centralized folder. From here, I would be free to add a new component to this specific folder, but for now, we're just going to leave it as is. Another example would be to add a template to the templates folder. The same concept applies by adding a subfolder to the existing templates folder so that I have everything stored in one location. What you'll notice now is that it'll say generic folder versus components as this is not a components folder. We can also select other folder type which will allow us to select the type from the drop down here. In this scenario we can actually just go ahead and create a new schematic templates folder. It's good to remember that the folder is always going to be context sensitive. So for example if I created a schematic templates folder when I go to add a new template, this is going to want to add a schematic template. So we've looked at modifying existing folders and adding to them. But I want to show you how to add your own folder with your own item type. Now from anywhere in this general area, we can right click and we can add a new top level folder. We'll select generic folder for now. What we see sometimes is that companies may want to create a test folder or a folder that will only be visible to certain people. Now, since it's a generic folder, we can actually add whatever type of subfolders that we wish to add. Now, for this example, I will actually create a components folder along with a templates folder. Now, although this wouldn't be the folder structure that you may use, we did cover the basics on how to modify existing folders as well as create new folders if you choose to do so. One thing that's important to dive into is the properties of each folder. The properties of the folder can be accessed by right-clicking on the folder itself. For example, as we mentioned before, the components folder is always going to want to reference a component template, where other folders may not have this option. The two important properties that we would like to look at is the item naming scheme as well as the sharing options. The item naming scheme is going to determine how the objects in this folder are going to be named. But for example, for a components folder, if a template is assigned to the folder, the template is going to take priority for the naming scheme. Although there are a few default options, it's worth sitting down with your team and deciding what your naming scheme is going to be for this folder. Next important property for this folder are the sharing options. This is where you can decide who is going to have access to which folder. This is where you're going to decide who can have editing rights, viewing rights, or if you don't want that person to see the folder at all. In that case, you would simply remove their name or their role from this list. 
this can be beneficial when you're working with external contractors or people outside of your organization and you want to limit their visibility to the folders in your workspace. Now there's plenty of different ways to set up your folder structure, but it comes down to your personal preference to see how you want to have it. 